guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording Tuesday, March 19th for the bulk of the episode. Uh, we're going to have the Celtics Bucks recap in here as well. We'll be recording after that game. Uh, and you guys will be hearing this on Thursday. So the game will have happened last night. Uh, a reminder before we jump into everything to leave a like on the video if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, it helps us out a lot. And subscribe to the channel. Both things are very free. Free for you. Just click the button. Just scroll down and click the button. We'd appreciate Wait it. Wait till that I... changes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you are listening on podcast platform, that that's happening. Uh, make sure just to wanna, follow just the just want to humble you. Make you think about it. <laughs> I don't even think that's a thing. Uh, but you make can, sure you to... You like Patreon and stuff. <laughs> I guess, yeah. If you true. wanted. Um, Technically, we could put all our stuff on OnlyFans. That would be actually a little funny. You could. You just upload <laughs> videos don't... of us doing pods. <laughs> I don't think that'd be great for our growth. Um, make sure to follow this uh, pods on Apple and Spotify. If that's where you listen, leave us five stars. We'd appreciate it. Uh, and comment on the video. What's popping for a chance to win a $10 in pop needle gift card and sign up for prize picks and use code CLNS at checkout. Uh, get some deposit matching there. All right, let's jump into the recap of the Celtics Bucks game. All right. We are here after Celtics Bucks Celtics took home a win. Uh, came down to the wire a bit more than it should have, kind of like the first game uh, at TD Garden. Pretty similar, I would say. 122-119 uh, victory for the Celtics. Giannis was out for the Bucks. No Drew uh, Holiday or Sam Hauser for the Celtics. Joe, after the game, said, yep, that means he can't take anything away from it. And I thought it was sarcasm, but I think he was serious. Uh, it was funny to hear. Um, Celtics had a pretty healthy lead for most of the game let it slip a little in the fourth quarter to sam's credit to his article that he wrote they bent as much as they possibly could but they did not break uh so they'd get a win but this was a uh an interesting one um to say the least you look at the game chart and it's very, very similar to the one that you wrote about sam but um i could feel like some of uh celtics nation could end up uh perhaps overreacting to this but it wasn't oh, i'm great. pissed oh okay <laughs> I'm pissed. Uh, no. <laughs> thought this was way too okay. close. But I'm pissed for like a different reason than normal. I, I'm pissed about how they blew the lead. Not so much. And I, I know this can be spun into a positive, which is a good thing. What, what is this? The fucking bubble? You saw a zone and you melted again? They had no answer for Milwaukee zone in the fourth quarter. I thought we were all past this. Put was weird. Porzing is at the at the nail. I know he was not very good today at all. To to the <clears throat> fairness to the team, he was six of sixteen, and didn't make a three. But figure <clears throat> it out. Everybody just standing around. There's Derek White was the only guy that scored for like eight minutes. Figure it out. And he was you, bad. You in gotta the final have few some <laughs> other plan. What'd you say? I said, and he was bad in the final few minutes. <laughs> and he was bad in the final few minutes, which is rare from him. But. They, they should be better by now at this. They shouldn't get shell-shocked by a Bucks team that's running a zone without Brooke Lopez in the middle. My God, it's not like he's sitting down there waiting for you like a big old tree. They had Portis in the middle. Yeah, it, it, it was weird. They kind of like, they found a mismatch they wanted out of the zone, and then it was that was the end of their passing, and then they just kind of settled for whatever, they shot they, uh, whatever shot they got out of that, um, which was frustrating to watch happen. Uh, equally, we had sort of... Maybe I'm wrong and you can correct me. It felt like a similar like Dean Wade scenario with Bobby Portis just hitting every contested three that he took. Uh, it, it, relatively so. A couple of them were open, but Jalen was like, put his hand in his mouth on a couple of those two. So I think there was a balance there. So that was that was annoying. Dame hit a crazy shot over Al Horford at the end of the game too. So th there was definitely a mix. I mean, I was sitting here throughout the first half thinking like, okay, this defense isn't terrible. Jalen Brown was harassing Dame the whole game and the Bucks shot 48% from three. So like, I, there's a balance to it. Like, I don't think they, like, it, after watching the game, I don't think the Celtics played terrible, terrible defense, but if you just looked at the box score, you'd think they were the worst defensive team in the world. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think that was like, a weird thing that happened as well. No, no. Um, I mean, but. I'm not mad about the defense as much. I mean, I thought, I mean, 36 fourth quarter points aren't great if you really which want is to be weird. realistic. That's what they I'm saying. Like 33, I, and then Dame threw up a heave at the buzzer, which that's actually, what I'm saying. Like, did, that literally happened in the first game. The, the first game ended in the same exact way. Like, Dame threw up a heave in that yeah. game, too, to cut it to three. Yep. Uh, but finish up there. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, 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 I was just saying, like, I feel the same as you. Like, I didn't look at this game and think defense was the biggest problem. But if you look at the box score, the Celtics shot 47% from the field, 45% from three. The Bucs shot 54%, 49%. Like, you read that and you're like, okay, so the defense was the problem. But, like, that's not how it felt watching the game. <clears throat> the problem during the game felt like, okay, they can't score in these final minutes. But 
in reality, like you said, they scored 36 points in the fourth. Like you look at the box score, that's the problem. So it was like kind of a weird game in that sense. Um, I thought like, well, the know, equal problem is the Celtics game, scoring like... 21 in the fourth and six of yes, those were Jalen Jason free throws, late game fouling. So before that it was 15 oh, oh. and then Porzingis had mm-hmm. the put back dunk. And then before that's 13, like that's bad. Mm-hmm. It wasn't good at all. And everyone yelling at Jason Tatum for not doing anything in the third, like, uh, I don't think he was third the quarter was good. In this game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he, after the Celtics Close. went through a dry spell, he literally said, let me just, like, score four straight points for you uh, while the Bucks have cut, after the Bucks have cut the lead to free three. And also, to your point, like, the whole, oh, why can't you break the zone? Why aren't you beating this Bucks defense when Brooke, uh, Lopez is a tree? doesn't help when the solution to breaking that is Chris Tops hitting threes and he can't fucking get any of them. Like, that is the solution to beating Brooke Lopez in the paint, is sucking him out and having No, no, he wasn't in the paint. That's why it was so confusing. It was Portis that they had low. If it was Brooke Lopez, I would understand a bit more. Okay, Regardless. Like, this gigantic guy is low, just waiting for you. If there's someone low, you should be able to hit threes. And there was one possession I remember in particular that was like, uh, um, this isn't like pick on KP day. At, at the end of the day, they won the game and we're no, just he, he was bad or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But like, <clears throat> this is the possession that I'm, I'm like thinking of in my head when I'm, I'm talking about all this stuff. Like, uh, nope, that's the Pritchard one. Yeah, it's this one. Dame, first of all, Dame finished like, yes, he shot the well. Dame is one of the worst defenders I've ever seen in my life. He is horrendous. Oh, he sucks. Um, <clears throat> look at this play. Watch this play. Watch Dame on this play. Give Pritchard a wide open lane. This is how you beat the Bucks defense usually when Lopez is down low. Look at this. Dame just says, here you go, Pritchard. Drive to the hoop. Free. Have free drive. Look at that. Helps. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this man. This this man is shooting 40% from deep this season, and they're just leaving a butt naked open. And look at this. Jason Tatum is wide open. That's how bad this Bucks defense is. And obviously, he shot over five from three, didn't make that. But like, those are some ones you want. Um, especially in this game. I saw John Smyers comment to you on Twitter, like saying, was Tatum going to do anything? I didn't really feel like he was the problem in this game. I think he was a facilitator in the third quarter. And again, like you said, the third quarter wasn't the problem. I thought he stepped up and to his credit, when they went to the inevitable Jason Tatum isolation, which is usually like not great. It looked pretty good today because they put Malik Beasley on him and he just fucking bullied him to the the best. Yeah, exactly. So I think he did a good job in that sense. Um, and also, for what it's worth, like I didn't clip it because I, I didn't. It wasn't like a um, a shot that you could clip. It was like a possession that didn't have like a clickable score bug thing. Um, there was one possession in the third, and actually, maybe I can't find it in my notebooks. Well, after I throw it to you to talk, Tatum got the ball on the wing, and you could just see the entire Bucks defense go like. We're on this side now. Oh, Tatum has the ball. We're all five going to move to the other side of the floor to stop a Tatum drive. Like this was another nugget scenario where they're like, we're not going to let Jason Tatum beat us. And he made the pass to the corner and Derek White, I forget. I think he missed the three, but like he was open. I know, I know the player talking yeah. about in my head. So I think part of the, oh, Tatum sucks, whatever. Like people don't in this, I don't want this to turn to me defending Tatum, but I truly don't think this was the game to be like Tatum sucks. And a lot of it is, the Celtics have such a great basketball team, and yet teams are still saying, okay, we're going to shift our entire defense to cover for Jason Tatum. Yeah, I didn't watch this game and have my takeaway be Tatum was bad. Like, I have the fourth quarter numbers up in front of me, and like one of six on paper looks pretty bad. But I didn't feel like he took terrible shots. Like, I don't know. I wasn't miserable with it. He took a one-legged follow in the lane that Porzingis got the rebound for. Didn't think it was an awful look. I mean, he drove and got the big make at the end of the game there to kind of ice it. He was all right. Like, it is. I, I love to criticize Tatum, but today's just kind of not the day. The thing he did the most in this game was actually one of his makes in the first half. Like, I think it was a fast break, and the ball's, like, fi- flying around the offensive half for the Celtics. And then it gets to him, and he, like, dribbles out and takes a pull-up three of a port as he makes it. Or no, it was Middleton. Yeah. And I was, like, mad. My mom was like, why are you mad? I'm like, did you see, like, how the ball was moving and then it stuck? But, like, I didn't really feel that in the fourth quarter. The thing I got mad in the fourth quarter was Tatum's getting the ball, and it's still the, sh- the same shit where people are just standing there. I suppose, <laughs> yeah. yes, it's a zone. It's a little bit different. That was fine. It, it's yeah, a little you bit talking. I'm just putting these up while you talk. You can't fly around 
and be like, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving because the defense won't follow you. That was an okay shot. Like, this is also like not a point of the game where they're drowning either. You know, yeah. this isn't really they're a terrible 15. read the room situation. That at this point, I was like, okay, I've kind of seen enough of Tatum for a bit, and I didn't yeah. like that he got a tech there. That was a read the room. Maybe don't <laughs> yeah. get a tech. I, I will also say, he got slapped like all the way across the bicep. Like this was a LeBron at the rim moment. This was, dude, watch this. Can I slow it down? This was. Not I don't know even, if you can like, slow it down, but when I watched this on TV, <laughs> he's I he's really not even thought it was close ball. to the ball. Do you see his I arm? Guess. He's not even close to the ball. Um, just to like, it, I guess, give Tatum rewatching it. It looks like he got fouled, but the sound, like people yeah. were like, I heard the slap. I was like, I don't know. It kind of sounded like ball. Yeah, he's not even close to the ball. That's all bicep. It's Tatum's too big because his bicep sounds like ball. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, <clears throat> mm-hmm. This was like, eh, I didn't love that, but there was there was not that much time left on the shot clock, and they got the offensive yeah. rebound. This was bad. And that was by a the way. horseshit call. <laughs> that was terrible as well. I, <laughs> I discovered in this game that I really don't like Dame. Dame plays like such a rat <laughs> fuck where he's just looking to draw any ticky tack foul that he can possibly draw. Mm-hmm. Didn't like yeah. the flop on the Horford drive. The guy doesn't play a lick of mm-hmm. defense. All he does is try and foul bait mm-hmm. around the three point line. He does make some incredible step backs. Like he's very talented, but some of the shit he was trying to pull in this game was frustrating to watch. Like that's an okay shot. And yeah, it rubs off on like the rest of the box. Like Middleton did the Embiid thing where he got a rebound and fell and got a foul from it. <laughs> you yeah. don't really see Middleton this around also- the league. Milton flopped on one as well. Like he was flopping a bunch of them. And for what it's worth, like um, Dame sold. They had a real chance to win this game. And Dame's final shot was a contested layup over the fucking that was a good, leaping Jalen Good Brown. defensive possession, though, from Jalen. I thought Jalen was, was really great. good on that drive. Jalen was great all night. Jalen was fucking locked in on defense all night. He deserves a ton of credit. I'm going to write about it for Celtics vlog. I asked everybody about it. I asked him. I was like, What's it like taking on these defensive matchups? He just goes like this. He smiles like it is. He's like, it's fun, man. I like, I love it. He's, he's like, yeah, it's, it's great. Um, I don't know. This is a weird game for me because, like, yes, you have to acknowledge that the Celtics blew a massive lead. And, yes, like, that's not a good thing. And it's been a problem, et cetera, et cetera. But, like, it's a double-edged sword. Well, it has to start because <clears> – what do you mean? It hasn't been a huge problem this year. Like, well, they, they – Exactly. And they've think- done a lot of this where, like, it, it does not cross the line. They don't lose the lead. This is what I'm I, saying. I was what talking I don't to- like is that it happened against Milwaukee twice now at home. It's the same game. Yeah. It's the same game. It's the same game. Um, I was talking to Kari, uh, who writes for Boston.com, and we were talking about it, et cetera, et cetera. And, like, as much as this isn't good and you talk about the problems and you learn from it, et cetera – the last three years, they lose this game 10 out of 10 times. Like, this is not a game. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, never that's win true. this game. And they win these games this year now. And I, I think that's a testament true. to how different and how improved this group is. Um, even though when it's ugly, they can't still out pull, pull out, uh, excuse me, pull out wins. Cause last year's team, the whole narrative was if it's not a blowout, you're not going to win the game. And I, I think the, the big storyline with this team this year is people are trying to make it that again because they're blowing a lot of teams out and they're like, oh, look at they lost the Nuggets twice, that Cavs game they blew. But like, we're just amplifying the few times it's happened. Like, it doesn't really happen that often anymore. They, they're usually sticking in it like this. And I know you wrote about it too. Um, and if, again, I, I feel like the commenters are just going to be all pissy and mad, but I don't really care. Like, this is our pod. We can say our own opinion. It really does feel like for the Celtics to even be close to losing, Everything has to go right for the other team, and everything has to go wrong for this. Like Bobby, uh, Bobby Portis. I'm sorry. Like we can watch these threes. I, I know a co- maybe like one or two of them are open. Jalen played some fucking damn good defense on the other ones. Like I, I'm like I can't. I, I'm not gonna sit here and like say like oh he was wide open. They just disregarded Bobby Portis. There was like a couple where I thought maybe Kristaps should have done a better job closing out. Like that. That's my one thing maybe. But I, I really don't think the Bobby Portis one was, oh, they they completely lost him. Like, that's the Celtics' fault. Like, Jalen was in his fucking mouth on the two threes he made in that fourth quarter. Like, the last they, uh, well, we his, his four shots in the last four minutes. But, yeah, I'll let you. Yeah. They left him for one of these after he made a couple. Let's see. This one, that was a floater. I mean, he was yeah. kind of open. Porzingis played help. <laughs> I think that was kind mm-hmm. of what they wanted out of that possession. This one... Is this the same possession? Oh, no, this is... This might be okay. it. No, this wasn't it. Jalen closed out pretty well. He just made it. He chased him, like, yeah. And then I remember... That again, one he closed just... out on? Oh, these are only <laughs> makes, the... right? 
yeah, those are the only threes. He he only took three threes in this game. Like I feel like everyone's like, oh, he barrage from three. He took three threes this whole game. So and there was one went, after the one that you just played where he yeah. was the most open of all of those shots. And he missed. And he missed. He this went. was horrendous. Pull this up. This is I like, lost my stops. shit at the TV. I this was is like, what oh, I'm maybe, saying. Maybe guard him. <laughs> yes. I was the same way. I'm like, Chris stops. What are we doing? <laughs> Hello? And he just he missed that one, of course. They locked um, out on that, huh? But that's how it like, felt like Jamal know. Murray was in the first Nuggets game. Like he was just making the contested ones sure. and missed the open ones. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's a tournament season or the fight for a playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app where you could turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. Testing my skills on prize picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $1,000 with just a few taps. Prize picks is really simple to play, and I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Use the code CLNS for the first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. I I didn't feel that like I wasn't mad at the defense. I I was in like a get a stop mode a little bit, but like we just watched, I don't think they played awful defense on Bobby Portis. I think he's a better player than Dean Wade and deserves credit for that too. But <laughs> yes, like it, it's not like lightning striking. If the guy's going to make shots, you shouldn't be like jaw to the floor. The problem mm-hmm. I had is they saw a zone and they looked haunted by a zone. Mm-hmm. And we haven't seen that all yeah. year. I don't know what was different today. Maybe it was just Porzingis is off. Maybe he's still getting his legs I, back I think, underneath them. I think that's part of it. But I also think underratedly, like, Drew has also been really good as a connector this year, and this is this isn't like it's true. Drew, Drew's not there. You're it's well, okay to crumble. Obviously, you, you got to be better than that. But Giannis having, is waiting in the paint instead of Bobby Portis. It's a little different. Too. Exactly. It's <laughs> it's different on both sides. But I'm saying like, I, I don't think it can it's go unsaid point. that like Drew Holiday is a great connector. So I think he definitely helps smart. Him sort of get out of those things. Uh, exactly. Yes. But, and he's a good leader. The Celtics. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The Celtics shot. I'm just looking at their fourth quarter shots like to see. Five of 18, 27% or 28% and three of nine from three. Hmm. Pretty good on free throws. Eight of 10. Only, only misses were the two that Jalen missed back to back, which was brutal Mm -hmm. at the time. Those free throws were painful. Me and me and Noah were sitting up top and we're like, how many of these do we think he makes? And Noah goes, I think one. And then we were like, (laughs) we saw him go to the line the second time. We we were both like hand on head on hands. Um, the second time I had Grant ready to go on Twitter, I was going to tweet the Grant pick. If he missed him, he made them both. I'm going to make job. both. All right. Uh, <laughs> is there any more negative stuff you want to talk about? Um, I'm trying to think. Like, I, I truly, it, the, the, it was so weird to me. Like, I agree with you that the offense felt like the problem in this game late in the game. And I, I agree that it was, but that's not what the numbers say. Um, what do you mean? In, in, in terms of like, the Bucks shot like obscenely well in the fourth quarter. And so if you compare the Bucks red hot shooting numbers, like if you look, I'm saying if you look at the box score, you wouldn't point at the offense uh, in the game. Like you, you break it down to in the, the game quarter, overall. Like, yeah. No, Celtics played good offense. I know today. Like, they did. And that's why the fourth quarter was most frustrating on that end, because it's like, what the fuck happened? I agree, but I'm, the I'm the saying wheels like, came off. we're both sitting here saying like, oh, I think they played pretty good defense when even in the fourth quarter, especially the numbers like, well, the Bucks made all their shots. So I I, I don't know. This is a weird game. I'm not going to react to it. I don't think game. you can. 54% from the field and 49% from three. <laughs> How many times they turn them over, though? It felt like they forced Milwaukee to turn the ball over quite a bit. 14. It's pretty good. 14 is pretty uh, – eh, it's league average-ish. It's like two more than league average. Celtics had nine turnovers today, if I'm not mistaken. Like, I, I'm not just bad. saying, like, the, the Bucks made all their shots is all I'm saying. Like, so if The you Celtics look at also – all right, I'm going to pull up the actual full game box score because I'm just looking at the fourth quarter numbers. Celtics also had two more offensive rebounds. They did get out-rebounded overall. They shot poorly in the fourth short is all I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, if you just look at the box score, it looks like – they played bad defense too. I don't know. 
I'm just saying, I don't think this was as much of a crapshoot overall as it felt like it just, like you said, the zone broke them and no credit to Tatum for making some shots and credit to um, them. I don't think anybody's better, saying but. that overall. They were up 18 points going in the fourth. I, I don't know who's commenting that they were bad throughout the entire game. I think the focus. No, no, no. no. I meant, I'm talking. Sorry. Now I'm talking about the fourth quarter. Yes, yes, yes. Was, okay. That's yeah, all I, I, what do you got? You have yeah. But Pritchard was great. Uh, positive stuff. Pritchard, yes. this is <laughs> the best game I've ever seen Peyton Pritchard play. Peyton Pritchard was inspired tonight. He was Who's hustling. That? He had two offensive rebounds. Both of them were huge. He shot seven of 11. He had the most unbelievable second quarter. I, or was it the first? First half I've just ever seen him play. Making big shots. He had Gallinari on him and just thought it was the funniest thing ever and dribbled a bunch of times and hit a step back so with his foot on the line. And he put a jolt of energy in the Celtics team like I have never seen. I I am so happy with what we saw from Peyton Pritchard today. I'm happy that Noah is vindicated after she tweeted that he could be an all-star and people were really we're talking about her. the whole game. <clears throat> Do you see and my tweet? I, I saw a series oh, of tweets from you. Um, just so impressive what we saw from Pritchard and it, it's it, it's a no Giannis Bucks game, but it still felt like a big game. Like there was a big game feel to it throughout the crowd first half. Pumped. Like when Pritchard was fired up, the crowd was fired up. It seemed like Pat Bev said something to him or did the two small to him, even though I'm pretty sure he did it to Cornette. He did it and, to Cornette. And after the game, Pritchard said, it pissed me off that he did that to my teammate. Yeah. So. And Pritchard like had a spark under him. I would love mm-hmm. to see that in a playoff game. Yeah, this was my. Uh... Look at Randy Orton slithering. Oh, watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out, watch out. <laughs> that was my tweet. <laughs> I tweeted Pritchard after reading this last night, and I quote tweeted. And then they got up. All-star thing. <clears throat> and then they got up. Yes, they. Um, yeah, it just it just felt like a game. Oh, Pritchard, I didn't say anything about Pritchard. I guess I just showed the tweet. He was he rocked, dude. It was so sick. The, the rebounds, yeah. him getting hyped every possession. Um, <clears throat> credit to him, he was awesome. I mean, Sam covered it all. I, I wasn't trying to brush over it. I was just. Um, he, he ruled like this was I agree. It this just was, like, sucks. The game I've ever seen. This game ended the way it did. Well, I mean, they still won, but like the story is not Pritchard as much anymore because it's like, <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. I, Why'd you have to do us all like that? We were all having fun. And then it's harder. It. I agree. It, it's it's we talked about all the bad things. We analyzed it all. It's overall, yeah, it's just yeah. harder for me to get into the weeds down the stretch of the season. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's harder for me to like be super, super like this team sucks now. Cause we all know they don't. It's not it's that this just... team sucks now. It's just a, ah, didn't love that. That's really what it is. Well, of course, of course. I'm just, I don't know. I, f- my point is, I feel like and I'm, you're not doing this obviously, but I feel like a lot of, comments or a lot of twitter is going to be like we should be worried and talk radio is going to be all over this as the win for the bucks and i just don't feel that way i think what happened is the celtics had a mental lapse which is human nature and it's like you need to do everything you can to avoid it which they have done for almost the entire season of bending and not breaking um and the Celtics did the thing where they're up a lot and they take their foot off the gas a little bit, which again, they haven't done for almost every single game this season and it happens. And so th- that's my whole thing. Um, but I know a lot of people are not going to like me being that level headed and I guess neutral on it. <laughs> I yeah, I mean, you can be new. You have a train to catch, don't you? I do. Yeah. So we can get out of here in a second. But, uh, uh, NBA standing <laughs> quick, quick oh, NBA shit. standings of all time. Just quick. Cause we, we are obligated to do it. I'll pull yes, it up. We didn't do NBA I'll, standings. I'll spoiler read alert. We didn't do the NBA standings later in the show because uh, it was we too soon after. Tuesday. So we'll do a very rapid NBA standings recap now. You get it now during the Celtics section instead. Celtics now have an 11 point, uh, 11 game lead over the Bucks, and everybody else is way far behind. Uh, obviously, Milwaukee's coming off a loss. Cleveland lost to the Heat tonight. Uh, the Knicks have won four straight, six and four in their last 10. Magic won four straight, eight and two in their last 10. Looking scary there. Philly has climbed out of the play in. The play in is now the Pacers, Heat, Bulls, and Hawks, who will likely all stay there. The bottom nine and 10 is what I mean. And who gives a flying fuck about anybody but our Pistons who have lost four straight, sadly? Western yes. Conference, Thunder are looking hot. They won three in a row, seven and three in the last 10. Uh, Nuggets, they beat Minnesota last night. Close game. Eight and two in their last ten. Uh, Timberwolves not dealing with Cats injury well. Five and five. Clippers five and five. Pelicans on a three-game heater. 
They are chasing down the Clippers, only a half game behind them now. Uh, the Kings at six, seven, and three. Sick. The play in is Adam Silver's wet dream. Dallas, Phoenix, Lakers, Warriors, all in there, all the star power. Who wouldn't want that? Golden State, five and five in their last 10. The only team that's relevant that is not in the top 10 is Houston, who has won six straight. They are eight and two in their last 10. They are now just two and a half out of the play in. So they could come mm-hmm. down. Jalen Green. And put some pressure on them Warriors. It's Jalen Green time. But yeah, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's not, a, it, there's more pod left. I'll throw it over the rest of the <laughs> We are back after Celtics Bucks. Hopefully it was a good one. We're recording a day in advance. This is sooner in advance yeah. than we usually record. I can't even get hurt at this point. <laughs> yeah, we're here. Sam's Brian not even high after about it. Pistons win. <laughs> we're still thinking Pistons. Um, speaking uh, of, I guess. Pistons was a home game, but road games lately have been home games for the Celtics. Noah Dalzell wrote about it for Celtics blog, uh, and it's been a thing for a while now. Going back to that Denver game, I feel like was the first time in a while we'd say, like, oh, wow, Celtics just travel really well. But they have all season. A lot of green in a lot of road arenas. Uh, the Wizards game in particular, Noah wrote an article, another home win for the Celtics, this time in Washington, D.C. <laughs> there was so much green in the, that arena. She posted a bunch of clips of it, so I'll pull it up here and we can take a look. But Pull it up entirety of capital one arena was just green like sam and i were looking at the pictures on the pregame stream and it was just just green jerseys everywhere um these guys travel so well now my mom none too pleased with what people are saying about the traveling fans on sunday she was very sure to inform everybody that it is saint patrick's day as you're seeing these videos and and she thinks that had something to do with everybody wearing green and then i said if I was a Wizards fan and they were playing the Celtics, I would not wear green, no matter what. You can't wear green. You just Plain can't wear simple. green. Yeah, that's a no-no. A lot now, of Celtics Jack, fans. Do you think if the Celtics wore a different color, like if they were not green, do you think it would be as noticeable when they show up to the arena? Like the Avengers are in the crowd waiting for them. Because um, no. green stands out. Yeah, I mean, here here's the crowd. Sorry for the loud. This this is the the crowd um, from Noah's perspective, and you see a lot of green in the crowd, mm. especially over here by the bench. Um, I don't think it would be as noticeable, but I think that's a big reason. I mean, weirdly enough, why like Lakers, Warriors, Celtics are the teams you usually think of as traveling fans. Like yellow and green stand out. <laughs> like you can see a lot of yellow and green in the crowd, Purple no matter too. where you go. Purple too. Yeah, like you see yeah. these distinct colors, um, and so I think that helps. But even if the Celtics were like red and blue, like if they were a red and blue team, I still think you'd see that like everywhere. Um, yeah, yeah it, it definitely wouldn't be as distinctive, <laughs> but I, it would still like be present. Like, I think it's just the the matter of the history. Oh, you would the hear them. Yeah, exactly. You hear them for sure. Um, it's cool, know, it's, though. It's credit. To them. And, and the Denver one is always a big one for whatever reason. Like anytime they go to Denver, no matter what, like think back. Oddly enough, do you remember like the day Kemba got hurt in Denver? I do, yeah. And yeah. wait, was that was that the semi game too? My trip, yeah, a different game. Shemi well, got I don't hurt know if, if it was a, if he had like an outburst, but he literally ran into Semi's abs. Yes, yes, that's what yeah. I'm thinking of. I just have to close the door. Sorry, you keep going. And anyways, like even spanning back to that time period, like everybody in Denver that's a Celtics fan shows up. They will be there no matter what. It's not a new thing. The incredible part of this is that denver is the reigning nba champion and they are getting drowned out of their own arena by celtics fans that doesn't happen yeah when a team's good their fans go to the games and denver has loyal fans at least to an extent i know a lot of those are huge there and that's like a big thing where like a lot of the sports people support the football team instead of the basketball team but regardless they're coming off an NBA championship. They're going to be there. So mm-hmm. for the Celtics faithful to show up and make it essentially a neutral site game at the very least is incredible. Yeah. The 24 season NBA attendance report nuggets have, and obviously a part of this is like how many people can fit in their stadium, but the nuggets are like top 10. They're sixth in, in total attendance. The Celtics are ninth. But again, I think that's part of it is just how many guys you can fit in each yeah. arena. Garden only um, has 18.6 thousand, I believe. Well, then something so, around something about other, this, other uh, are up at 20. 
something about this attendance report is, is incorrect then because it says 19,000 average for the Celtics. So uh, maybe it's the standing room <laughs> up on the ninth floor then. Perhaps, I guess. I don't know. Regardless, point is the Nuggets have plenty of fans. They're plenty of loyal fans, and the Celtics still manage to inhabit that arena whenever they go there. And so it's just a credit to the fan base. And I think it's been a really cool thing. Although I will say the, the wave at TD garden, <laughs> I, I'm starting to be on J King side. <laughs> it's got to stop. They I don't started like... it next to me. Yesterday. I know. That's where it started. Uh, they were just cheering. And I was like, what's going on? And I realized it. <laughs> Did you and I got in on it? Cause I knew, oh, it was, no. I knew, I knew who it was affected. <laughs> I knew Jay King was going to be none too pleased when he saw everybody standing up. Mm-hmm. Well, there was a point where the balcony and the loge were like off. It was, like they, yeah, it was not coordinated. Not at all. But I don't know. I guess when you're up by 25, you got to think of something to do, right? <laughs> There's got to be something to keep you entertained. I just can't believe they put them on the big screen that one time. It was so good. They were just up by Jay so King. many. You know, like probably 10% of people yeah, in the no. arena knew. That was that was for us. That was for the media. That, that yeah. was that was perfect. Um, next thing, Chris stops talked about his injury. Speaking of J King, I think J King posted this. He uh, did. I Twitter, I have to find it. But uh, Chris stops returned from injury against the Pistons on Monday night. He spoke about how he felt. He said he felt good. Uh, he also made it clear he spoke in the locker room, so I wasn't there to to hear him talk. But um, he made it clear that like if this was a playoff game, he would have been playing. If these were playoff games, he would have been playing at all of them. This was purely precautionary. Um, that he's doing well. Jay King tweeted, Chris Rozinga said he would have been completely fine with the recent hamstring injury if the Celtics had been in the playoffs. He said he was held out for five games as a precaution. So all seems good in, in the world of Chris Porzingis, who is still a beacon of smiling and uh, joy whenever he's on the bench. Porzingis just loves being here, man. He'll, he'll show up. He'll play hard. It was funny yesterday. I was watching him stretch out at halftime, and they had this like um ramp type thing it's 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 just an incline like footstool really where it's slanted yeah so he can stretch out and he's like doing up downs on there and he's just like laughing he's stretching his hamstring out that's how he's laughing i stretch a lot i never laugh i hate stretching it, it's the worst and um poor Zingus is out there having a grand old time he gets the craziest reception out at the garden too like he comes out and they're all just like laughing with him. Like he was sitting on the bench while they were in warmups. Biggest smile on his face ever laughing with the fan base. He like acknowledged fans. I think um, was it in Washington or something like he like turned and gave like the crowd a fist bump and they got pumped. It might have been. It, it, it might have been, been the home game before the Wizards game. Phoenix. Mm. Probably. I mean, yeah, he's just been pumped up. It doesn't matter if he's on the bench or, or, or hanging out. It's good out, that like... he's not really in pain, though. Which, yeah. when it was hamstring, 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 I don't see a muscle injury on the injury report and get scared for what it's worth. Like, I, if it's knees, if it's joint pain, that's a little different. But if it's just like a muscle, it's just like, okay. Like, yes, it's tight. Yes, it's uncomfortable. But I'm not worried about you being out for a long-term issue. Obviously, if you tear a muscle, it's going to take you out. But, you know, mm-hmm. if it's just tight, it was obvious they were being precautionary. Now, if you want to worry about an injury... Look no further than Al Horford's left big toe, which is continuously being mentioned on the injury report. The man cannot get past that injury. Mm-hmm. How do you even treat that? <laughs> you sit him. Uh, the specific way to treat you that sit is out the actually, second under the back of the back. Yeah, you just can't is? play back to back games. It's actually the best way to solve that injury okay. problem. Uh, speaking of injury updates, we can just throw this in here too. Sam Hauser uh, was in fact at the game yesterday, just a, a day after spraining mm-hmm. his ankle uh, against the Wizards. Um, and he wasn't wearing an ankle brace. He was walking in the arena. There was no brace. There was no wrap. There was nothing. He was just walking. So it seems like he should be okay for what it's worth. It doesn't seem like this is going to be a long-term thing. Uh, and it was reported by Himmelsbach, which we went over already, that it's not going to be a long-term thing. But still, it looks like uh, Hazard will be A-OK moving forward. <laughs> Much similar to you and I. You rolled your ankle <laughs> yeah. bad last year. I rolled mine bad. I did. Both I did. of us were back in action the day after. You went to the Celtics game to cover it. And mm-hmm. I was back at work in the office. No problem. It's true. Little problem, but I was there. <laughs> we both got back in the games too. I played after I rolled. My yeah, ankle. I, I played. I played for like two hours after I rolled my <laughs> yeah. ankle. I said, you should- "This is going to be my last hurrah. I'm getting my mm-hmm. reps in here before I'm out." You got to ride the adrenaline. You I'm like Hauser, punk. Yeah, bum. <laughs> yeah, he's got nothing. We're supposed to rely on this guy to make uh. big shots in the playoffs. He can't <laughs> even play through a little rolled ankle. 
What are we doing? Speaking of the Celtics bench, you pulled this from Reddit. Uh, Reddit is all yes. in on the Celtics bench, guys. This post said, quote, I'm falling in love with Hauser like I did with Posey. PP has that little man confidence slash chip on his shoulder. Cornette is a, quote, locker room friend to all unexpected to be a guy guy. They all play D. I know they all know their role and push for more in a team friendly way. Brad did well and our vets showed them who we are and who they need to be now. I like it, guys. Looking forward to seeing how our execution first round playoff series. But I have to say, this is fun to watch. Uh, as the Pocahontas gift says on Twitter, whenever it's tweeted out, them white boys was, are dangerous. I was so confused by what you were about to say with that. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Usually it's Jack that has to be concerned for me. I forgot about like that's where like the meme was from. Yeah. For whatever reason, I thought it was Mulan. I know it's not Mulan. I know it's <laughs> Disney animation. But that, like, the first time I saw that, I was like, you know, like, the Mulan gif. And you're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. It's just it doesn't no. even make sense. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense. But they are dangerous. I would not want to. I told you. I said Pritchard could be a starting point guard in the NBA. If he was mm-hmm. a starting point guard in the Celtics, they would be okay. He starts yesterday. What do you have, 22 and 7? 23 and 7? Yeah. In real minutes? Good for him. Hauser, of course, had the 10 three-pointer game on Sunday, and Luke Cornett continues to be the guy that just is way better than everybody thinks every single time. The Redditor here posted it perfectly. Uh, locker room friend to all, unexpected to be a guy. Guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these white men are dangerous, man. <laughs> like it's it's like, it's funny. Wait till uh, Svee gets joke, cooking. Right? Yeah. Like, it's all funny. Drew, Drew Peterson, Peterson, too. Yeah. It's all a uh, funny haha joke until you sit back and realize, like, wait, these guys so you're are playing like, against them. Yeah, legitimately really, really good at what they do. We were talking about it at the game last night, like, how many Celtics players could seamlessly fit into any single team in the NBA? And the answer is a lot. Like, Tatum, the way he plays, he could seamlessly fit in with no matter what, like, even as a second option if he needed to, because that's just his play style. Mm-hmm. Derek White, absolutely um Peyton Pritchard Sam Hauser Luke Cornett all of them bench guys could fit into any role any team they needed to like the Celtics just have a bunch of guys who play the right way play within the flow of the offense and are really really good at what they do um, and can probably have bigger roles than they already do like if Sam Hauser was on a team where he was the legitimate third option like what he could have you think he could average 15 points easy same with Pritchard like these guys are just good yeah, they, mean, they make their shots what is Hauser average now like nine <laughs> ten mm-hmm Sam He's Hauser averaging averages quite a bit off the bench. 8.4 and 3.4 on 46, Close. 43 splits. Yeah. yeah. He's taken five and a half threes a game this year. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, we talked about this, and t- I think Timmy G is the originator of this, so I will continue to give him credit. If Hauser's on the floor, he should be a top scoring option for you. Not yeah. first, but like second or third. Oh, yeah. You can run plays for him, and he will give you a lot of points if he's hot. Oh, yeah. For sure. We saw it on <laughs> Sunday. 30 points for him. Easy. Probably would have broke the NBA record for threes with plenty mm-hmm. of time to spare if he didn't roll his ankle. He's unbelievable. Cornette has been better and better as the months go by, too. Don't you feel that way? Don't you feel like since the season has started, Cornette has gotten better? Yeah. And I think he's settled into the role that they, they've they wanted him to play uh, and figure it out. He, he's just the best. I'm going to write about it for Celtics blog. I keep saying that, and I keep like getting distracted and having a bunch of stuff on my plate, but... He is the best at finding space on the floor. Like just he'll just be wherever the opening space yeah. is. Like screen and roll, you're cooked. If he, he if he's running a pick and roll and he's the 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 roll man, you lose. Sorry, game's over. Like you're just getting scored on. It doesn't matter if it's scored on because it's a Derek White floater or because somebody had to help on Cornette and Derek White kicks it to the corner or Cornette just dunks the ball over you. You're not like you can't stop it. He is just such a good screener and works into space so well that it is one of the best plays the Celtics have, period. Not just like with him or with the bench, like in general. Luke Cornett running the pick and roll with Tatum or Jalen or Derek, usually whoever, it's money. Pritchard, too. Him and Pritchard have been on one. I mean, you made fun of our Pistons on Monday on the pod. You were like, look at this terrible defense. You're paying attention to Luke Cornett. Now look what you're saying. Pick a side. Well, no, the Pistons were really horrendous, but both can be true. <laughs> don't don't turn it. They're terrible, and you know it. <laughs> Not for long. And for, for what it's worth, all the people like saying, oh, to me, is Katie, he's such a better rebounder, like all this stuff. Luke Cornett averages more blocks and rebounds than to me, is Keda in double the games. Or not, not as many rebounds, but it's 4.2 for Keda, 4.1 for Cornett. Like, he's played double the games, and his averages are just – like, it, it's – I like Kata, and this isn't me saying Kata is bad, but it's pretty clear like who is more ready to contribute to a winning team right now. And yeah. that's what you get. So 
Shout out to the Celtics bench, man. We talked about it a bunch in the past, but they have been just killing it. So respect to them. Yeah, Cornette being steady is huge. Like we talk, I I always say like he's doing his job. If you don't notice him, it's true. Katie, you you don't really get the I didn't notice him games. He's either tremendous or he's really hurting you. There is not a middle mm-hmm. ground. That's why you really can't afford to play him in big games. It's a gamble, and I don't think mm-hmm. Joe really is a gambler. Yeah, definitely not. He's he definitely literally not uses math to coach basketball to give him the best probability. He's not going to take uh, weird odds. He's he's going to take the sure thing mm-hmm. every time. <laughs> every or maybe time. he is a gambler because he likes the threes. I don't know. I'm sure somebody in the comments would go against me regardless. Well, if you said that to him, he'd be like, "That's not a gamble. That's the percentage play. That's what analytics tells me to do. Like, that's not a gamble. That is <laughs> that is what you're supposed to do in his mind." No, I, I know that that was my initial take for what it's worth. Yeah. But I, I feel like someone's going to be like, well, he's actually like taking more lower percentage shots. Yeah, get out of here. Uh, let's check in with the email, see what y'all had to say. We appreciate it. But first, let's go to the what's popping wheel. Again, a reminder, you comment. Today. We do. Comment what's popping on the video on YouTube for a chance to win a $10 in Pop Nito gift card. We have four entries, Jordan and Colton from the email, and then Ryan and Jared. Jared trying to get Jared back the into goat. the action here. Spin going away. that wheel. Oh, Jared, <laughs> we didn't Jared rig the wheel. Out. Jared sneaks it out. Jared, email us at hbtcpod at gmail.com with your name. Congratulations. And phone number. Uh, name and phone number. We'll get you hooked up with some in pop needle popcorn. Uh, again, hbtcpod at gmail.com. Email us there. We appreciate you. Those of you that entered, enter again. Yeah, keep entering. You'll get there. You might get lucky and nobody will enter. <laughs> All right. Email RJ. What's popping? Time keeps on passing into the future. Morning, guys. That was quite the exciting trivia match Monday morning. I think the lesson there was trust your shot. One Shut up, things, RJ. <laughs> one of the things that no one tells you about uh, tells you about as you get older is that you can be talking to, with grown adults who know nothing about what happened 20 years ago because they were like five years old then. I'm not complaining about how the youth don't know anything or crap like mm. that. Just acknowledging it's something that you stub your toe on every so often. Aside, speaking of toes, we need a hashtag. Hashtag mm. Al Horford's left big toe to keep all of Celtics fandom updated on the most critical health component uh, of the Celtics drive for Banner 18. But I digress. Um, 20 years ago, John Feinstein worked... Uh, with Red Auerbach on a book titled Let Me Tell You a Story. It was about the lunches Red would host, uh, hold at his favorite Chinese restaurant that included his brother, former Celtics players, and other guys Red wanted to chat with. It's a great read, uh, and if you haven't picked it up, I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's available in print, audiobook, and e-reader formats. I cherish, <coughs> excuse me, cherish it because uh, it was a present to my late, uh, my late mother got for me, and it reminds me as the time passes, all we have left uh, and all we can leave for others is our stories. I think that's why I enjoy you more on show so much, along with folks like the team at First of the Floor, SJ uh, Gabelli, Noah Dalzell, Drew Carter, Eddie House, just to name a few, because you share your stories about the Celtics and why other folks to share theirs. Not to show off how cool you are, but it's such a neat thing to share with other people. Uh, keep up the good work and read the book. It really is amazing. Be well, RJ, who has a fondness for Chinese food, too. W. That's a good take. Red hour back. Was he the first to say, get ready to learn Chinese, buddy? You never know. <laughs> get ready. <laughs> I was sitting uh, on that the whole time. I was just sitting here like waiting for my pitch to come. You're such a bum. Uh, but yeah, shout out. I'll have to check it out. Chinese food. Also, Sam, favorite Chinese food. Like, what's, what do you order when you get Chinese food? Okay, so this is a good question. I am a fiend, and you're going to hate this, for the chicken and broccoli, like, platter that comes it's it's good why would i it hate has, that? I, I like it sounds like a like a health bro meal, oh, oh. but it's not i like beef and broccoli but the same thing effectively. it's good it's so good it they have good. like the sauce i do drain the sauce though because it's i don't like i don't like it's in the liquid i have some of it but i don't want it like sw- i don't want it to be a pool i'm not trying to eat soup that's the whole point you like dip the broccoli it, in it you get it ju- soaked up the juices no but it comes already in it yeah but so then, it, like, it already has it there- soaked but you leave it in there, so I don't know. I, I, okay, whatever. Uh, I, I, I know I, what you're saying. It does add to it. I'm a sesame chicken guy. Sesame chicken is very good. I but, am also an OG Chinese chicken fingers with fries as a child. Guys. Every with single fries. time, up until yeah, you get the fries. They have good fries. Up until I, I was like know. 23. I don't Just know Chinese if I've chicken fingers ever seen. I don't know if I've ever seen a Chinese food place serve fries. So you might have gotten the one. Uh, I, I think more Chinese restaurants have fries than you think. You just probably don't know that they have fries because you're not looking to order fries from a Chinese restaurant. Exactly. Uh, next one. 
Colton Flat, hashtag Monday Night League Pass. Hey, Jack and That's Sam, right. I got tickets to next Monday's Hawks game on League Pass. You think Tatum's going to sit that one too? Going to be super disappointed if so. Also, would you rather? Would you guys rather they use Walsh and Amy or bring back Isaiah in the 15th spot? Also, super crazy that Little Debbie's bracket didn't have the Devil's Squares uh, in it. And you guys should definitely try Long John Silver's. They have great chicken strips. Thanks for the entertaining pod, Colton. All right, a lot, lot of stuff to break down here. First, uh, do you think Tatum's going to set Colton. that one out? Yes, thank you, Colton. First, thank you. Do you think Tatum's going to set that out? I don't think so. I think he'll play. Uh, I, I don't think he want. And for what it's worth, I don't think he wanted to sit out on Monday either. <laughs> I don't think but, they're playing a back to back next week. Yeah. So if I had to guess, I'd say he'd play. Um, would you rather use Walsh and Emi or bring back Isaiah? Well, Jordan Walsh is on a roster spot. He's not a two way player, so he's already on the 14 man roster. Um, I'd rather Isaiah than Emi. I've come back around on that point. Um, so I'm in. Mm. I've, we've talked about this before. Um, and then, do you know the Devil Squares? I don't know the Devil Squares. Uh, I don't know. But for what it's worth, we didn't make that. We have a website that yeah. just has a bunch of brackets that we pick from them. So don't don't oh, blame us. These are good. I do know these. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is good. Huh? Yeah, it's like that's like the, the cupcake, but as a square. <clears throat> yeah, those should have been on there. And then Long John Silvers. I they I don't know probably if they do. Any. They probably do have great chicken strips, but I think the more important thing to note here is that if you're branding your restaurant as a fish place and the best thing somebody can say about you is they have good chicken strips, probably need to be better. <laughs> that or you just have priorities. Like, you know, chicken is the top food. Like, chicken, don't miss. If you have chicken, they will come. This is true. Maybe they're just trying to cover their bases. Uh, the For what it's worth, these do look like the Chinese chicken strips. Like Long John Silver. Do they? Look at these. Pull them up. They look like Chinese. They do look like, like them. Yeah. <laughs> the and the hell? Chinese chicken strips are fire. They're good. That's not. I wasn't bashing them. It was just. Maybe I'll get that today. Now I'm. I'm ready to learn Chinese. Relearn it out. Uh, all right. Next one. RJ, what's popping? Today's fun stat. Howdy, guys. I hope Sam had fun at the Pistons game Monday night. Sure looks like the Celtics did. I did have fun. Thank you. It was fun listening to a different set of announcers describe the season through fresh eyes. Zora Stevenson, uh, Dijoni Carrington, apologies if I butchered that, and Abby Chin looked at Luke Cornett and Peyton Pritchard contributing to the Celtics' success in their role as starters alongside KP, D. White, and Jalen Brown. I enjoyed hearing their accomplishments talked about as simply really good, as simply good basketball. Derek White got a triple double, and I was surprised to learn he couldn't manage. Uh, to get one earlier in his career i'm confident it won't be his last fun fact with the 25 point victory over the pistons the celtics now have more 20 point wins for the season uh 15 than they have total losses be well rj who is looking forward to the sun sparks game in august too i didn't realize that is an insane stat all right so i'm gonna read it jack and i before the show I, we were on reddit looking for material and I did find this anecdote that I did not hear on Sunday because Jack and I were at our game. We didn't have the broadcast on. So, obviously, in preparation for yesterday's uh, all-female broadcast team, Abby Chin was chatting with uh, Drew Carter and Scal on the Wizards broadcast. Now, this is this is how it's broken down. The caption, did anyone else hear or get video of Drew Carter's hilarious advice to Abby Chin during the Wizards game? Drew and the White Mamba were taking subtle digs at each other. Oh, are that we're going to start again. Drew and the White Mamba taking <laughs> subtle digs at each other all the time is comedic gold. Scal, Drew, and Abby were talking in anticipation about last night's all-female broadcast, I think during the third quarter of the Wizards game, and Abby seemed somewhat nervous to be doing color commentary for the first time in her career, which I'm pretty sure is not true. I'm pretty sure she's done it on the radio at the very least. So Scal said something supportive like, you just got to be you because everybody loves Abby and there will be no problem. Abby said, thanks, Scal. And it was almost gross how sweet the moment was. She seemed genuinely touched by Scal's reassurance, which is nice. W. Scal. And then Drew says, yeah, Abby, you just got to dye your hair red and say two for one at the end of every quarter. <laughs> I read this out loud to Jack without having read it. And I cracked up when I read that line. W. Drew Carter. He, he is a man of culture. I love Drew Carter. He's so funny, man. He he's 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 all he time. brings a different element to the broadcast. I think the Celtics really got a good one. Mm -hmm. He's great. Shout out Drew Carter. Uh, he's a beast. All right. Last email from Jordan Caulfield, um, which I'm gonna I will cover your information so you don't get doxxed, George. Jack highlights <laughs> his information. Uh, 
<laughs> well, just so I remember to. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan, for emailing. And I will hey, make everybody. Sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold up, hold up. Uh, blog. Info. Okay, Jordan email says, What's popping, y'all? I realized recently the Seas did their trade deadline deals with Blazers and the Grizzlies. Both teams they did the big deals with in the offseason. Is there a history of trade relationships? Slash, should we expect to see more deals between these franchises, or is it just a coincidence? Best, Jordan or uh, This is a good or question. Caulfield. Um, there is a page for it. Have you do you are you familiar with the page? No, I'm not familiar with the page, but I was like gonna share some knowledge that I had like oh, hit just it. from like history. Hit yeah, so like I feel like this is definitely a real thing in the NBA where you have like trusted front offices that you're willing to work with. For example, I know the Celtics and Spurs have done several like just salary dump type things, slash Derek White came to the Celtics over the last couple of years. Like they gave them Vonley for literally cash considerations just to get off the contract. So I think Brad and Pop have a pretty good rapport with each other. Now, what is this page? Yeah, is so basketball, basketball Reference has a page that tells you every trade every team has ever done with every other team, and it tells you how many there are. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, you can see who has done how many trades with what. From the looks of it, Denver OKC is 15. That is the most I see off the dome. I see a 16, Golden State and Atlanta. Detroit and Atlanta have done 18 total trades. For the Celtics, they have done the most trades ever with the Thunder, 13. Um, they've done 11 with Detroit, 10 with Cleveland, 10 with Memphis. Never have done a trade. Uh, sorry, that's just themselves. They've only done one trade ever with Chicago. Um, really? Yep. Can you name it? Yeah, can you? Yes. Daniel Tice. <laughs> Daniel Tice, yeah. Daniel Tice Lakers. is the only trade they've ever done. Curious how many they've done with the Lakers. Where are they? Where are they? Yeah. What is Celtics it? Celtics have done three trades with three. the Lakers. Would Good. you like to see them? Would you like to guess them? Do you know what they are? Right, I like to guess them. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I feel like one of these is recent. Uh, the most recent one was 2004. So, so no. no. One of them is Chris Mim. Um, or no. Yes, yes. Yeah. Chris, Chris Mim... Uh, Jermaine Jones and Chucky Atkins went to the um Lakers for Rick Fox and Gary Payton. Rick so Fox Celtics came back. Lakers traded Rick Fox and Gary Payton and a pick to the Celtics for Chucky Atkins, Jermaine Jones, and Chris Mim. Do you know who that pick uh, became? It's somebody significant, too. It's like uh, Mr. Ray John Rondo. Yeah, I knew it was significant. <laughs> I was right, I was half right. The other ones, uh, Lakers traded Tony Petit to the Celtics for Travis Knight. Uh, the other one, Lakers traded Don Chaney, Kermit Washington, and a first to the Celtics for Charlie Scott. So, uh, and fun fact, before the Celtics did their trade a couple years ago, um, they had never made a trade with the Spurs until 2022. And now they've done three in the past two years. First trade they ever did with the Spurs uh, was Bryn Forbes, Bull Bull, PJ Dozier, Juancho trade, which is nothing. Then the Derek White trade and then the Nova only trade. Uh, and then the Great Williams trade. Those are the only four trades they've ever done with the Spurs. And they've all come in the last two years. Damn, this man Rick Fox straight up retired. He didn't even play for the Celtics the second time. Yeah. He just said that's enough of that. Yeah. This page sick, by the way. Like seeing all these like things. <clears throat> Very cool. Um some teams who have never done a trade with each other, uh, Toronto and Washington have never done a trade. Uh, the Spurs and the Clippers have never done a trade. Uh, Toronto and Charlotte have never done a trade. Uh, a Toronto, yep, yeah, Toronto, Washington, New Orleans and Dallas, Orlando and Indiana. <clears throat> so, lots Seems of teams uh, just fucking like hate that. each other. Yeah. yeah, Celtics have done a trade with every team. Lakers have done a trade with every team. Um, I'm seeing there any other ones. No, Chicago Fox, and Boston the is the way. only one. Mm. Very handsome. Yes. <laughs> very, very good looking man. <laughs> this is true. I'm trying to think about the rivals. What trades have the Celtics done with the Sixers? The only uh, four trades. Last was that one the was... Turner signing trade? Oh my God. No. All these trades have been since 2000 and three of them in the bet in the last 10 years. In the last 10 years. Okay. Phil Press, yes, we won. Um, Phil Pressy was not no. uh Tatum trade. Yes, Mark Fultz draft day trade, yes. Um mm -hmm. how many of these should I actually know? Uh three. You should know all of them. Tatum. Except for two two thousand one was Roshan McLeod in the first for Jerome Moiso, so you wouldn't get that. Okay, but so every other one you should know. <clears throat> yeah. Oh dear. You'll be like, oh yeah, duh. <laughs> not Muscala. 
I'm just trying to think guys that played on both teams. This is going to be really bad. Give me like another well, 30 seconds. Or, don't, or like, don't think, don't think slowly that way like make me them. stupid. Don't think that way for one of them. <laughs> don't think that way for one of them. Yeah. As in Tatum never played for the Sixers, but that was still a trade. Oh, um. Mm hmm. Tybal. <laughs> yeah, Tybal, Carson Edwards trade. The last one you should have gotten first. This is your, you're going to be, oh, the moron. Big moron. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell know. me uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me know when you want the next clue brother <laughs> give me a clue yeah don't tell me though uh well uh it happened very recently <laughs> yeah springer <Yep>. yeah <laughs> my clue is gonna be it happened a month ago <laughs> uh all right let's what be done with do? it Email says it happens. It happens. Uh, do we want to save the NBA standings check in for after tomorrow? Yes. We'll do it briefly then. All right. Just so. do it briefly. Yeah. Just because we're going to give you the same standings check in as we did yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Literally. So you're going to see us in different clothing tomorrow doing the NBA standings check in. I'll now, wear the same outfit. <laughs> Will you? <laughs> Maybe <Fine>. not. <laughs> uh, but now we can go over and check out. LeBron's Probably comment. So, on. Sam, you pulled this up. We were talking about this before the pod and decided to talk about it on the pod. So, would you like to break down yes. what's going on here? Uh, yes. Hold on. I want to change the background. So, LeBron I'm has his that. shiny new podcast with Reddick, where it sounds like LeBron only is the only one with a mic, which is kind of funny. In the clip that we played in the other video, it kind of sounded like Reddick didn't have a mic. Did you pick up on that? Like, he sounded really faint. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> he sounds like he didn't have a mic. They have one mic and LeBron gets it. But um, anyways, LeBron was talking about all things. And one of the things he talked about was one of his big, biggest rivals, Steph Curry. He said, I believe in 2008 or 2009 or whenever that light skinned fucker came in the league in Golden State, he changed the narrative. <laughs> Not very nice. He single handedly changed the no lead is safe thing. Mm -hmm. Steph and Allen Iverson are the two biggest influential guys in our game since I've been watching it and covering it. Now, Jack and I were sitting here looking for material, and I was like, oh, this isn't anything. And I was like, well, do we really think Allen Iverson changed the game? And <clears> you <throat> feel like yes. So I'll let you go ahead. Yeah. Because well, I don't have a ton of defense. I just don't think of it like that. I'm also 25. <laughs> I mean, I didn't get a chance to watch yeah. him closely either, but uh, just the way he plays the game is is – he was Steph Curry before Steph Curry in a way. And it's not the same because he wasn't their jack and threes. And that's everyone, what everyone thinks like, oh, that's Steph Curry. But realistically, Steph Curry, like before Steph Curry, who was the last point guard, dribble, dribble, like Michael Jordan. Yes. Michael Jordan was a lot of get into the lane, you know, back you down, mid range, pull up, like kill you on defense. He wasn't out there jack and threes and, and, and super cool, like just faster than you. He was just an athletic mm -hmm. freak. Like Michael Jordan's Michael Jordan. He is in a league of his own. He's different, but in terms of guards who will break you down, cross you up in the perimeter, score, flash, like, in your face. Like, Allen Iverson got in a pissing match with the refs because of his, his play style. There was, like, a five-game stretch where they were just calling everything on Allen Iverson to say, fuck you to Allen Iverson because he was such, like, he was just being an asshole. Like, he was just a badass crossing people up. Um tiny guard like scoring on the perimeter as the best player in his team to lead him to the finals. Like, that wasn't a thing that happened. And in a way, like that sort of paved the way for Steph Curry to take it to the next level of I'm going to do all that, except I'm going to do it in all threes, which is like something that's never happened before. And so I think that's the context that's necessary when talking about like how Allen Iverson changed the sport. Yeah. See, when I heard this, I was like, that's kind of funny. He changed the game. A small point guard that doesn't play defense literally does not exist in the NBA anymore. The NBA does not allow those players to be in the, the GMs do not sign those guys. They do not draft them but he changed the game. When you present it like that, I think of it a bit differently. You have a great point. I think you're right. But I was just like, did he really? Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, he wasn't the first, like, good player to be a guard that was the best player on his team that was a uh, NBA Finals-level team. Like, you had Isaiah mm -hmm. Thomas on the Pistons. You had uh, other, like, Magic, but he wasn't short. He was 6'9". He played center yeah. for a series. He did, um, he did play center. It's his first final. This is the uh, the video I saw. Like, this is the context. It, it was uh, Tim oh, Donahue. So, like, that's the context. Yeah. 
There was one game where Allen Iverson threatened Steve Javi, and we felt as a staff he should have been suspended, but he was only fined $25,000. I had the next game. You going to believe this guy? Up in the morning meeting decided that Allen Iverson, although he carries the ball all the time and it's never called, we were going to enforce that rule against him. That oh. night we went out in the first half, and we all – each took a turn. You know, we had a pack. We're all going to call a palming violation on him, and, and we did that. Go oh, I remember this. this so and this was part of uh, and he the documentary. And you would usually call a foul. Yeah. It's just like his play style of like dribble, dribble, Jamal Crawford, but Allen Iverson level. Like, that wasn't a thing. Like, back in the 90s and 80s and stuff, it was all big guys. And even when you had, a, like, a really good guard, it was like make the right play, pass, play good defense. Like, he Initiate dominated in a way, yeah. He was a he dominated in a way where it was like he's that motherfucking guy on the perimeter, like that. It just his play style, I think, was so unique. It wasn't a thing that happened, <clears throat> and so that's I think the credit to him. Um, just to Sam also uh, for me. really bad. Yeah, I mean, I didn't get to watch it either, but I I just know and like yeah, I don't know the context, but um, <clears throat> also while we're talking about LeBron briefly, Sam, I saw you uh tweet the uh, did you like the tweet. The, the worst guy, you, you know, makes a great point. Um, <laughs> LeBron on the two for one. I'm gonna tell you what kills me: the two for one shot at the end of quarters. But people sometimes don't account for the four or five positions before that. Uh, and then JJ said, "I think it fucks with the flow of the game." I bet you hated that, Sam. <laughs> well, it's like weird because I have I have like stock on both sides of the fence with this now because I did the Celtics blog article and I worked hard on it and I found out I was like, well, if you do this right, it's not that bad. The Celtics do such a great job of controlling the pace at the end of quarters, and they do a great job of outscoring their opponents at the end of quarters, which is super important when you're trying to win a game and not blow a lead. Mm -hmm. So in that respect, I think it's a good thing. I think the Celtics do a decent job at it. I think the Celtics could work to improve it, work to come up with better motions, better sets to where they're not just getting tough threes in these situations, and you can actually score more frequently. But on the other end of it, it looks stupid. A lot of the time, it looks stupid. <laughs> a lot of the time, you're looking at these shots, and you're like, this is awful. <laughs> There's a reason why I was so frustrated by the two-for-one that I decided to put in – I don't remember how many words I did on it. A lot of words about the two-for-one, a lot of hours watching tape and be like, is this good or bad for the Celtics? Let's take a look. And sadly, LeBron makes a good point. Like, yeah, maybe you don't have to do it every mm -hmm. single time if things are not going well and you need a basket. Like, you don't want to sacrifice – Hey, we we really need a basket to stop this run, but we really could get two shots at a basket. Like, no, mm -hmm. no. And then all of the build up to it could be supplementary chaos too, because you're trying to, you know, three for two, four for three, etc. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, yeah, uh, tough, tough look. Yeah, worst person you know makes a good point. <laughs> uh, next thing, we're gonna react to some dunks right now because. Uh, Anthony Edwards and Jalen Johnson just decided to murder people last night. So first one, Anthony Edwards, which is perhaps the best dunk of the last what, like decade? Like since it, Anthony it, Edwards did it, another dunk, he dunked on um, Nabe. Yeah, that one. Nabe. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at Anthony Edwards. Just like send John Collins to the shadow realm. Did not score. This, this is a play. This is a play. Another because turtle. you'll see here, John Collins borderline gets a concussion from this. Oh my God, dude! This is so that first time. So another turnover for Utah. Edwards gets it. Holy oh, shit! Throw it down. This this dunk was. <laughs> That's one of the best dunks I've ever seen in my life. Like that is, that is a crazy dunk to just pull out mid game. All over. Also, he, like John Collins hand. is not like some slub. Like he's doing these dunks to other people. He is athletic yes. as hell. Yes. Anthony Edwards dislocated or hurt his finger from the force with which he dunked the ball and hit the rim. Like this I thought, is, people were saying this was it was like the Dwight Howard dunk where he throws it. It does he doesn't even hit the rim. I don't know. I, we can watch again real quick, but I just know. No, he hit the rim. He got that all the way there. Um, <clears throat> there was a video after the game of him reacting to it. Oh, oh no! <laughs> that was the best look of my career. You got some good ones. <laughs> Is he live on TV? <laughs> he dislocated his finger. Yeah, he's live on TV. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, no. 
That's so gross, man. He's so sick. Um, th- that's one of the best dunks I've ever seen. And then Jalen Johnson. Do you see this dunk too? <clears throat> yeah, I saw this one. Jalen I, this Johnson. Is, people are hyping this one up. It's tough after you saw Anthony Edwards first. I know, I know. Like any other night, this would have been the best dunk of the night. But <clears throat> Anthony Edwards had to this is like the first play of the game, mind you. One of them. Oh my god, it literally is. Yeah, it's literally like um, the first play of the game. They get a stop, and then this happens. Wham! I mean, to his credit, he does jump over Austin Reeves. Like he does fully clear Austin Reeves, who is who is just standing there in the paint. Like this is insane. Why are we pausing? Twitter, come on. Twitter is awful on. with like videos. You you cannot like, watch a video on Twitter and not have a buffer if you want to pause. It's perfectly the first time. Look at this. Bang. Yeah, just, he really did just kind of jump over him. all the way over him. My God, that was disgusting. Is that Vit Krejci in the starting lineup? What are we doing? Uh, anyway, that has to suck. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, did we see? Um, did you see Austin Reeves reacting to this? <laughs> no, I didn't see that. Pull well, it up. Someone, a reporter after the game goes, "It would be negligent of me to not ask you about the dunk," and this was the interaction. <laughs> Um, it would be negligent not to ask you, Austin. But See, this is why I don't like you. I know. <laughs> I, I'm a good reporter. Um, what happened on that first play? Okay. Everybody's seen what happened. <laughs> Nobody had your view. <laughs> I don't want my view. Was uh, not a charge? Did you hear him? He goes, Nobody had your view. <laughs> no, you don't want my view. Yeah, that's all time. Uh, th- that's how you handle it, though. That's how you got to handle it. <laughs> this is why I don't like you. <laughs> this, this is uh would have been a little bit different if they lost. A uh, Lakers won. They, they won know. by like thirty one. Oh, I see. Yeah, true, <laughs> true, true. You have a little bit of fun. Yeah, they lose yes. by thirty one. You might not be asking about the dunk. Man, <laughs> go on the reporter though, because being in the situation, it's it's tough to ask any question. Never mind, break mm-hmm. their balls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Um, very funny, <laughs> very funny. Uh, credit to uh Jalen Johnson, Anthony Edwards. Those were some uh, whoosh, those are, those are some dunks. Those are something special. Uh, okay, let's um. Next thing, uh, Adam Silver is addicted to gambling, just like Bruno Mars, as he put on here. Uh, <laughs> Adam Silver and the like NBA <laughs> are working. It made me laugh. It made me chuckle. Adam Silver and the NBA are working on putting. Uh, a betting infusion. So the NBA is infusing betting into live games on a league pass. The league uh, and Sport Radar, a global data company, are rolling out a new option for league pass viewers to be able to track betting odds on NBA games as they watch them on the app and then offer the ability to click through and wager uh, through the NBA's betting partners. Now, very different prize picks, higher, lower entries, different. Shout out prize picks. We love that. Very different. very different. We love that. Go check out prize picks. Use code CLNS. This is egregious. This guy, this is too much. This is way too much. I don't like this at all. I'm not a fan. I don't know about you. I don't like this at all either. I mean, you heard me come on here and bitch on Monday about the people next yeah. to me at the game saying, I need this many points. I need that many points. I don't like the people watching basketball now is like becoming, I want to watch my bets. I have no problem with people betting on teams, but I, for whatever reason, the prop bets get under my skin. They are fun. Like, make no mistake. Like, it is fun. And I guess this is more about like, you know, at home watching. You're not going to the garden and cheering for your picks. But mm-hmm. this is like, I don't know. Do we really think sports gambling needs to be every everywhere in everybody's face at all times? Mm-hmm. I know this is yeah, tough because this is like hypocritical from us. So take I, it with a grain of salt. It's just, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think sports betting is a bad thing. Like, I think you should be able to bet on sports. Like, I, I'm not against it in general, but. I do think there needs to be some level of um, what's the word? Not restrictions, but like um, maybe restrictions is the word. It's a different word for it that I'm looking for, but like uh, guidelines or, or rules like in place, like that separated enough from the sport where it's not like, like you, you talked about it last time, Rudy Gobert, like saying like, Oh, you know, yeah. that, that's bad for the, Oh, it is bad. It is rigged. For it. This is like 10x worse than for the the game is rigged crowd. Like putting it integrated with the official NBA league pass viewing pl- That's a lot. Uh, and more to this, like I didn't put it on the sheet because I didn't copy paste this. I had to type it out and we get lazy. Uh but like I guess it'll take you to whichever betting partner you prefer or use. Like you can just click on all of them. 
Like they're making yeah. it easy for you to just lose your money. Yeah. Say yeah. what you want about prize picks, but they don't want me losing my money. So shout out to them. They're actually looking out for me. Good on them. <laughs> don't shout out me. prize picks. They don't want me losing money. We love prize picks, man. I do. Uh, shout out to them. They saved me money. <laughs> All righty. Are you ready for March Madness bracket? Pull it up. All right. We so gotta for, do today's, it. for today's March Madness bracket, we are doing the actual March Madness bracket. But Bet more you importantly, fuckers didn't see that coming. More importantly, we're not just doing the March Madness bracket. We are doing the How About Them Celtics group March Madness bracket, which I did create. We created hey, a group. Hey, and so the link will be this out. The link will be in the description for you guys to join. Um, We'll say it on the pregame too, which I feel like will be a better place for us to promote it because people will be like actively watching uh, and looking at it. Um, But if you'd like to join, it is a public group. It's just how about them Celtics. The logo is this little rocket right here uh, because it's literally the only green logo I could find on here. They don't let you do a logo like fantasy football. No, look like I'm trying to like add one, but you just have to choose from their stupid logos. Really? I can't anything. I was going to do, should I do the raccoon instead? Cause it's a rat. It's close thing no, to the rat no, they got. No, no, do, you do Thanos. It's the green. Well, the green is Celtics. Just look at the green. Um, I believe it's public. Yep, it's public. So there's nothing like no password or anything required. Uh, it is okay. unlocked. Uh, wait, locked. Oh, yeah. We'll lock it so you can't join after the first game because yeah. that's unfair. Um, but it's a public group. No password, no nothing. Just join up. Uh, it's how about them Celtics. Anyone can join. So if you're watching this now, join up. Name it so we know you, or like name your t- name your bracket. You know, like for RJ, name it RJ bracket. If you're Joey Spatchel, Joey Spatchel, like so you know who. Yeah, you if you're in our chat all the time, <coughs> let us know it's you. Come hang out, but um, we'll do one on the pod. You and I can do our individual ones too, but this will be like the official pod one. Um, okay. So we'll do our bracket. <coughs> let's rock. Right. Um, let's go through these, uh, do our brackets, uh, and see what we got. So UConn versus Stetson. Sam. UConn. I don't that know. boy, <laughs> that boy Hurley. You know about Hurley, Jack? You know Dan about Hurley's Hurley beast. being a URI coach? <clears throat> I, I know my day of it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We walked the same same campus. I don't even know if he was there <laughs> when I was actually at URI, but <laughs> but you did. He was here. Okay, FAU versus Northwestern. Now, for context, Sam and I don't know shit. At least I don't know shit. I'll speak for you. I don't really I don't know, know shit. Anything. I know FAU made a really big run last year. I will I, take that tournament say. experience and put them through over Northwestern, who I have not heard a thing about this year. That was going to be my logic as well. Mm-hmm. Um, San Diego State versus UAB. San Diego State also made a big run last year, right? They made it to the finals. They they were in the final game against UConn, right? Uh, did they I make think? the final? I think they they were in the I final four. The I don't know if they made the final. They might have lost I think to they UConn beat the FAU. Semi. I thought they beat FAU in the finals. Final four. Let me look at this. Is this is how well our knowledge goes? Yeah, back. this is bad. I'm pretty sure it was San Diego State in the finals. Uh, yeah, San Diego State lost was to UConn it? in the finals. They beat they beat no they beat Florida yeah Florida Atlantic in the in the finals. Okay, yes. All right, yeah. So I'll go State as well. I think that's yep. pretty safe. Um, next one Auburn versus Yale. I know Yale just beat Brown on like a big buzzer beater, like a really close game. It, it was devastating it. for me. Did I talk about this? No. Did you bet on Brown or is just no? Kids? So I'm I'm Brown adjacent. Well, effectively, Rhode Island, yes. Well, Kalen goes there. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Med school. So uh, I was rooting for them. But they lost. Mm-hmm. They choked. They missed a free throw and then gave up a wide open layup. Devastating loss. I was excited. I was like, Rhode Island's going to be represented in the tournament this year. I love that. And instead, no, they, they were not. But it's probably better for the conference, Loki, to be honest with you. I know Princeton lost, which sucks. Because I think they were actually like kind of decent. People are talking up Princeton, and they're just not mm-hmm. going to be in now. So yeah, Auburn is, that is brutal. I will say I am the team I'm most upset to not be in is Indiana State with Kareem Abdul Dabar. Yeah, I am also upset with the Larry Bird. They ties got snubbed too. too. Gotta... I heard they got really snubbed. Like I heard they were supposed to be like actually did this. Year. Everybody got snubbed. <laughs> um, so hey, San you... Diego State. Was I was going to say Auburn. Yeah, yeah, what do you think? Auburn. Auburn, okay. BYU versus Duquesne. I know nothing, but we got to start picking some upsets eventually. So we just, do we just go with Duquesne or do we uh, go respect to Danny Aid? We can't pick all scratch. That's lame. We don't have to start here, but hmm. it's up to you. People are talking about Duquesne. I'm in. I'm in on Duquesne. Fuck it. Put them through. 
I like upsets. I, I like a healthy amount of upsets, man. Can you make us a well? No, because then the thing in the middle doesn't work. Can you make us wide bigger? I was gonna say smaller because I can't see the bottom corners of the bracket. I mean, I can still make a smaller, and the other thing will just be in the middle of the screen. That's All fine. Right, that's fine. Yeah, here I'll put us in the corners. Hold up. Um, okay, we have Illinois. Up. Yep, against Moorhead State. Mm -hmm. That we did. Illinois, who won the Big Ten? Mm -hmm. That they did. <clears throat> so that is much better. <laughs> They're going to beat Moorhead State. Okay. Fine with me. I'm in Washington State versus Drake. I know nothing, <laughs> but 7 10 matchup. Washington State, I, I don't have faith in. I don't know. Drake's cooler name. <laughs> okay. You know, I think Drizzy. I think Drake. Go ahead. Iowa State versus South Dakota State. What do we think? Uh Iowa State. It's a good team. Okay. okay. From what I understand there. <laughs> Iowa State's good. Now, Sam. First time Houston. ever we don't have to do one side at a time. <clears throat> Houston versus Longwood. Now, before you pick Houston, I have Houston's something. Houston's like to supposed present. to win the entire thing, by the way. I have, go on. I have something to present to you. So I'm gonna I gotta I bookmarked it on Twitter just so I could do this bit. Every single year since 2017, I think it is. Every tournament since 2021, so the last three years, a top two seed has lost in the first round to a team with a phallic slash euphemistic name. In 2021, Ohio State lost to Oral Roberts. Mm -hmm. In 2022, Kentucky lost to St. Peter's. And in 2023, Purdue lost to Farley Dickinson. Mm. Houston is playing Longwood. I'm rolling with Houston. I'll have to pick Longwood in my own bracket, but we can go with Houston here. I I had to present the evidence. I had to present it. I had to, I had to run it by you. Nebraska versus Texas Texas A and M. Um, I don't want to pick all eight seeds, so I would like to pick Texas A and M. That is my only thing. That is all I've got for you. See, I watched both these teams play on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Nebraska looked good. Both of these teams blew leads. Nebraska was dominating against Illinois, and a and was dominating against Florida, and they both lost. So I really, like, I'm not going to fight you on that. You go ahead. Sweet. I'll, I'll, I'll say this about A&M, though. They, these guys, some of them never seen a shot they don't like. <clears throat> Tough. Uh, Nebraska, or excuse me, Wisconsin versus James Madison. This is the, this, uh, this is the big cat bowl. Big Cat versus um, PFT because PFT. PFT went to Madison, James Madison, right? Yes. <clears throat> so who are we riding with? I'm gonna go I, with Wisconsin. Okay, I'm gonna pick James Madison in my bracket, but I'll, I won't fight you on it. Um, I thought Wisconsin looked pretty good in the Big Ten tournament. That's why I, mm -hmm. I thought they looked pretty impressive. They have um, AJ Stores too. He looked really mm. like NBA level type of at least okay. creativity. That's, that's and okay. athleticism. Okay. Uh, Duke versus Vermont. I think Duke wins, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I think, think it's going to be Duke, too. I would like to see Vermont win. Me too. Shout out New England. Even though Vermont's like New fake England. New England. Sorry, Vermont people. Vermont nah, Connecticut's, is what they Connecticut's call them. Connecticut's more fake New England than Vermont. Do you watch your tongue? Connecticut That sucks, is Rhode man. Island adjacent. Connecticut sucks. It's Massachusetts adjacent, too. It sucks. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, like, eastern Connecticut is, it, it feels like Rhode Island. No, nah, Connecticut. Mystic sucks. is fire. Texas Tech versus NC State. NC State just rolled through the, that tournament. I think I'm fine with, with that pick. Team. I feel like that's going to be the square pick is NC State. Yeah. Square pick meeting. Everyone's going to pick it. Yeah. Everyone's going to be like, got to pick <clears throat> yeah. NC State. Did you just see them uh, in the ACC? Mm -hmm. Kentucky they versus the Oakland. Uh, they won the whole thing. Yeah. Whatever tournament yeah. conference they won it. Um, Kentucky versus Oakland. We heard a lot of good things from um, yes. Tyler Rucker about Kentucky. Kentucky <laughs> so, boys can play. We'll go. Florida versus is this Boise versus Colorado? I didn't yeah. mean that, but I think Colorado wins. They've got Cody Williams, who's supposed to be disgusting. So I think they'll get through and then beat Florida, to be honest. But I don't have a take. You can put them through. <laughs> okay, I'll go with mine. We'll go a little you, you know Marquette is through. Wish -wash here. Yeah, Marquette, we've heard good things about as well. Um Colic, down here. Rhode Island. North Carolina versus Hogwarts. Howard versus Hogwarts. Uh, UNC is going to win. Mississippi State versus Michigan State. I think Mississippi we, State. I was going to say we should respect its gear here. 
But if you'd like to just Always completely excuse. shit on it. But I, I heard a lot of people saying Michigan State shouldn't even be in. Michigan State, you mean? Yeah. Okay, we you can disrespect its gear on this the pod bracket. I'm gonna I'm gonna respect them on my personal bracket. Okay, but, um, <clears throat> that's fine. St. Mary's versus Grand Canyon. Saint Grand Mary's. Canyon is the online school that always gets advertised everywhere, right? They are the well coming to Grand. Yeah, they're Canyon playing University. 2K. <laughs> respect. St. Mary's apparently is very good. So if you don't know, St. Mary's is in the same conference as Gonzaga, and they won the conference. Wow. That is that is impressive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alabama versus Charleston. I think Bama probably just wins. Roll right? damn tide. <clears throat> Clemson versus New Mexico. Uh, uh, New Mexico. The You're going to pick all 11s? Yeah. Spoiler alert. I'm picking Oregon Pritchard. on the other side, too. Yeah. 11 for Pritchard. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Baylor versus Colgate. I don't know. I I had I heard nothing about Baylor this year. So let's go Colgate. Colgate sent me a letter when I was applying to colleges. Respect. Okay. Sure. <laughs> should, should we versus... knock them for that? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Dayton versus Nevada. I think Dayton think? wins. Dayton was the team to beat in the A10 this year, and they got beat. But now, nonetheless. Mm-hmm. We have Long Beach State versus Arizona. Now, have you heard the story about Long Beach State? Isn't this the guy that took the picture with the cheerleaders? No, I'm pretty sure Long Beach State fired their coach, but he still coached them through the end of the season, and then they made a miracle tourney run. Yeah, he was devastated. I think that was devastated him. The, the whoever's in charge of that. I want to go Long Beach State. Fuck Arizona. Sorry, Richard Jefferson. No. Yes, come on. No, Give me you one. Cannot. Give me one. Arizona is like a powerhouse team. Like they are uh, very good. I'm so bored. Your bracket. Ar- Arizona is one of those schools that like is a hoss now. Your like bracket. They, they have. They are stink. a newfound hoss. You're lame. Your bracket's gonna suck. I'll do my own. Purdue versus. You do your own. MTSC versus Graham. Purdue. I mean, Purdue's just probably gonna win. Like you have to. But I don't know what the fuck the other schools are. Yeah. It's... Utah State versus TCU. Eh. Eight nine is eight nine. I'll no, go Utah TCU. State. Oh. I what? feel like TCU okay. has had oh, more like I fun tournament really. moments than a lot of other schools. Um, I was gonna say Utah State for Nimi and Justin Bean, but if you'd like to go TCU, we can. <laughs> I like that. If you have like Celtics reasoning, you go for it. <laughs> Sorry, I got a phone call. I couldn't hear you during that. Um, Gonzaga versus McNeese. I've never heard of McNeese. What the fuck is McNeese? <laughs> I don't know, but the name's kind of cool. <laughs> No, nah, it sounds like a bunch of guys that are going to ask if they know who their father is. <laughs> it's true. We'll go Zaga. Kansas versus Samford. Now, Kansas is probably going to win, but Samford has the cooler logo, so I'll let you choose. What the hell is this logo? It's a, little, it's a dog. It's a bulldog. It's Kansas. Just look at him. It's all cool. You're such a fucking loser. I hate you. Uh, South Carolina versus Oregon. Shout out, Pritchard. Um, <clears throat> Creighton versus Akron. I assume you don't like Creighton's Akron a pretty because... good team. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we ride with the Big East on this podcast. <clears throat> Not that I really care about any of it, but it's like the I don't know. It's all around here. Um, Texas versus UVA slash CSU. Thoughts? This is hard because your your ten matchup is Virginia and Colorado State. Hmm. Everybody hates Virginia. In this tournament, people are mad that Virginia got in over like Providence and teams like uh, of that level. Yeah, you got to pick Texas out of principle. Okay, respect. Tennessee versus St. Peter's. Are we rocking uh, with Tennessee because they're the two seed, or against them because Grant? Oh, mm-hmm. I think you rock with them. Everybody says Tennessee is <laughs> real good. You just pick scratch when you fill out your brackets, don't you? That's no. That's what I'm getting from you. Uh, you UConn just can't versus... like dick around. The, the place to dick around is you not one and two seeds. You absolutely can't dick around. Have you seen the last four years? <laughs> you absolutely can. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> UConn yeah. versus FAU. UConn's a beast to respect. Um, yeah. I don't know anything about San Diego State or Auburn, so I don't. I don't have a preference. Uh, I'm trying to think. I watched Auburn on Saturday. I don't. Pretty sure San Diego State lost to Eddie House's kid, so I watched both those games. So fuck San Diego State then. We'll yeah, go, go with Auburn. 
Or wait, they lost to him. Not be the yeah. worst. Yeah, Auburn. So uh, Duquesne versus Illinois. I don't know anything about either of these teams. Illinois is a pretty good team. All right. Drake versus Iowa State. I want Drake. But if you'd like Iowa State, I won't fight you. I can do it on my own bracket. Just go Iowa State. <laughs> Houston versus Texas A&M. I know Houston's a hoss, but I'm going to have them losing in the first round on mine, so we can put them through for you. Okay. <laughs> Wisconsin versus Duke. Are you Big Cat or are you Duke wins? Oh, man, I would love to see Big Cat go forward, man. You could pick them. It'll be so funny if they go through and they get really far and lose. <laughs> uh, NC State versus Kentucky. Shout out Tyler Rucker. He told us what's the word. He told us about Kentucky. Go Marquette with uh, Marquette. versus uh, Colorado. All right. Um, North Carolina versus Mississippi State. North Carolina lost to NC State, and you said good things about Mississippi State, so I'm down to pick them. I I didn't say good things. I just think Michigan State was a team that nobody oh, thought oh, should oh. even be in the tournament. I see, I see. Uh, I it doesn't matter. I have no opinion. Put put whoever your gut State. says. Uh, St. Mary's, Bama. I don't know either of these teams. Go with St. Mary's. All right. You want to talk about Scratch? No more. Well, you- Scratch no more, motherfucker. Your version of Risk here was a five seed over a four seed and one thing, <laughs> you fucker. So don't, don't try to act cool now that you said I have no opinion and I put the eight seed through, you loser. <laughs> New Mexico versus Colgate. <laughs> uh, I don't know New anything Mexico, about you got Eddie House's kid on that team. It's true. Dayton versus Zona. I know you said Zona's good, so I'll just put them through. Uh, Purdue versus Utah State. We got Nimi versus Zach Eady. You're going to get that Zach Eady whistle right in front of your face. All right. Free throw merchant goes through. <clears throat> Purdue time. Zaga versus Kansas. I don't know these teams. Just do Kansas. If, if Gonzaga isn't winning their, it's their conference, I don't know what to tell you. Oregon versus Creighton. I just know we love the Big East here, so I think we have to go Big Creighton. East, Creighton through. Texas, Tennessee. I don't know anything. I don't. I do know uh, Dalton Connect is on Tennessee, and he's supposedly nasty. That's Put him I through. <laughs> all right. Up top, UConn, Auburn. I think UConn. Auburn. UConn's awesome. <laughs> Illinois, Iowa State. Uh, uh, do that, Illinois team. <clears throat> all right, we'll go Illinois. Houston, Wisconsin. I kind of just want to rock with Big Cat. I just kind of want to. Yeah, put him through. Put him through. <laughs> Kentucky, Marquette. I think just. Shout out Tyler Rucker. Unless you okay. like Tyler Kolek, because the Go Rhode guy. I forgot about that. Who do you want? Which Tyler do you want to roll with? Kolek or Rucker? Go with Tyler Rucker, because we actually know him. <laughs> Shout out. Uh, Mississippi State versus St. Mary's. Is this the St. Mary's miracle run? Or is it Mississippi State time? Yeah, put St. Mary's through. St. Mary's. Uh, Eddie House versus Arizona. Put Eddie House's <laughs> like? kid through. Why not? Fuck Snick yeah. Carey. Purdue versus Kansas. Kansas through. See you, Edie. Bum. <laughs> Love that. And then Creighton versus Dalton Connect. Big East time. Creighton through. Big East. All right. Uh, UConn versus Illinois. UConn. Uh, Big Cat versus Tyler Rucker. Kentucky through. <laughs> All righty. St. Mary's versus Eddie House's kid. St. Mary's. St. Mary's. Kansas versus Creighton. Big East. Kansas. Oh, Big East is done. Okay. UConn versus St. Mary's. UConn. UConn is just going to win. Kentucky, Kansas. I think Kentucky. Okay. And then UConn wins. And then, yeah, agree. How many total points scored in the championship game? Uh, <laughs> 73. Total? Uh, both teams. Both teams. Both teams. Both like teams. Combined. 107. 107. Wow. Low scoring title game, according to Sam. All right. Submit bracket. Did you see the Big East championship? No. <laughs> I did not. That's your answer. Uh, there we go. That is. It was eight uh, points in the first 11 minutes of the game total. <laughs> that is the How About Them Celtics entry into this group. Um, I hope it went through. Uh, yeah. So this is this is going to be entered into that one. Uh, can I name this bracket? Yeah, we'll do. Uh, official. HBT, yeah. Official HBTC bracket there you go that's what we got on this one okay so again make sure to enter uh into the how about them celtics one it's just spelled right like this you'll see the green rocket it's public join up uh and i'll put the link in the description winner will get something 
We'll get a free merch. We'll give you a free sweatshirt or piece of merch when it comes out in the playoffs. All right. Or in Pop Nito, you can choose. We don't care. Yeah. If you don't want right. to wear our stuff, go ahead. Time for the Ratless sandwich. Would you like to kick us off? Uh, yeah. Ratlist. I Ratlist is me for being naive enough to do so again. I am no longer saying yes to people that decide they would like to stretch when I'm using the stretching thing. It's just not happening anymore. That's your own fault now. Yeah, it is my own fault. I, I, I did it again today. I was about it. I, first of all, I put my water bottle right next to it. I was over there and I'm like, okay, let me go over and grab my weights quick. And you bet your ass the five seconds I step away, someone comes walking over and they like, look around and they're like, Hey, are you using this? I'm like, you know what? You go ahead. Cause I had to like do like a lifting set first. Yep. And must have been on there for 10, 15 minutes. Like only the people that I let go are the ones that are serious about stretching, which is like respect. Yes, you do need to stretch. And you uh, told me yesterday you take 40 minutes to stretch. No, I do. But I, if I'm stretching in the gym, I don't do it all at once. What I'll do is I'll do one leg, one leg. I'll do my like lift or whatever I'm doing. And then I'll go back one leg, one leg. So I'm not just sitting on there at all times. Mm hmm. But like, let's see. As much as I don't like to have it like used up for that much time, at least I know that person is using it properly. Because there sure. are some people that go over there for like thirty seconds, just like they just fuck right <laughs> off. So ratless to me. Yeah, it's your own fault. Uh, I will ratless the T per usual because they just shut the orange line down for a weekend or a week. They're just like, yeah, sorry, not working this week. We're not gonna put it, you know, in in use for this time period and it, it doesn't affect me too much because i can just use the green line for the same purpose as i use the orange line but it threw off my rhythm uh and so i got to the green line station i was just like it's just i know how to get around but it's just like different from what i'm so used to it's just like annoying and i was there i left like 10 minutes later than i usually do and it's not a big deal because i'm still super early for like pressers and stuff but it's significant because it means i'm at the green line station trying to get on a train or orange line, whatever I am at four fifty instead of four thirty, which is all the people who are leaving work and just everybody who's trying to get yep. out. And so the trains are packed. I'm trying to get on ratless people who just don't fucking move on the train. There's a balance, right? So on the train, you either have to, there, there are certain times when you should be moving. If people are getting on and off, get the fuck out of the doorway. I don't care if you yourself have to step out or you have to go in and take up the space that people who just got off are taking. Get the fuck out of the doorway so people can get on and off. Like, you're a moron. Also, ratless the people who get up out of their seat and get ready to get off the train, like, way too early. Because you're just fucking up the day for everybody. You're just get, moving everybody out of the way. There's this, like... Y like, you, like you, get, <laughs> you get You should get up when it is pulling into the station. Not as the doors are closing and you're leaving the previous station. What are you doing? Like, sit the fuck back down. Don't mm. stand. And the worst are the people who stand up and hover in front of their seat so they can't, other people can't take their seat. They're just taking up more Yeah, space. if you stand up, just walk towards the door at least. Yeah, fuck off. Yeah, people. It annoys me. I'm out. Rat list is um, Kalen. So Kalen likes to play music on my phone when we drive, which is okay because in my car, it's kind of hard to connect to the speaker with Bluetooth. So, like, I just kind of leave my phone on there all of a sudden my daily playlists have like Nicki minaj in it i don't, <laughs> don't want to hear that at least on use, my own you use daily playlists yeah i just use like whatever like the daily mix is like when i like do the show with you or whatever i just throw on whatever or like if i'm going running which so you get Nicki minaj right in the year yeah just skip nice no okay out of the minaj. <laughs> um all right let's so my friends, Ryan, his brother, Greg, came out with us, <clears throat> right, mm. for St. Patrick's Day. And we get back after, like, a day of, like, hanging out, going out places, and we're all sitting around just, like, hanging out. We're playing a game, <clears throat> and I don't know how they, they were playing this game when we walked in. They're just playing Guess the Animal we're thinking of. I don't know. Like, we're just all drunk. So some somebody just thinks of an animal, and you, everyone turns around. Good job, buddy. Uh, everyone just turn, goes around the circle asking questions or guessing. And <clears throat> Greg is taking... 10 years to ask his question or guess his animal right and we're at a point where like we know a bunch of stuff about it and he goes has anybody asked if it's a fish yet and we're like greg you should have been fucking listening <laughs> asking yeah, questions asking and so we put fish. him on a timer we put him on a timer uh and brian starts the timer 
far too high. Brian goes, okay, everyone, let's put them down. 30, 29. Like, he starts going down from 30 instead of, like, 5 or 10, or like a normal amount. And it gets down. Greg waits the whole timer to ask his question. He uses all 30 seconds. And he just goes, is it a fish? And we're, and we're just like, brother. That's, and he goes, no, it's not a fucking fish. Like, it's, dude, what the fuck are you doing? And everyone's just like, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's just... It's ratless for taking all that time. You had all that time to think of a better question than is it a fish? And you just went with is it a fish? Uh, it was not a fish for, for those of you. It's not a fish. I forget what it was that round. <laughs> ratless is uh, ESPN. So I was watching TV today when I was on the, the um, stationary bike at the gym because, uh-huh. you know, my ankle. So, so I'm looking at, obviously, like they don't have the sound on. And I'm looking at uh, Get Up, what they have on the screen. And what it says will bewilder you, Jack. Are the 76ers with Joel Embiid the biggest threat to the Celtics in the East? (laughs) Are you all right there? Have you never watched the playoffs the last couple years? You think Joel Embiid without conditioning is going to come back and be a a force enough for the Sixers to beat the Celtics (laughs) for the first time ever? Pretty much since 1982, mm. the first time ever they're going to beat the Celtics with this Celtics team with Embiid uh, with with no conditioning is going to come back and beat them. Mm. You think so, mm. Legler? Mm. You think so? I don't think so. <laughs> that if you asked me, I would say no. I, I would not say it's the 76ers. <laughs> I'm not convinced the 76ers are going to get the play out of the play-in. Sure, they might lose to the at Bulls. this point. Yeah, what a that's they're really out of stuff to talk about nowadays, huh? Is how do we put straws. together an hour show of nothing? But they're talking about and we talk about the Celtics. We're like, are they the do. Sixers the biggest threat? Probably not. Never. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think the bike pick a few teams. Also rat list. <laughs> that shit's a motherfucker. You ever do the bike? Yeah, like stationary bike, yeah. You ever like do it hard for a half hour. I I got up off that damn thing and I could barely walk. My fucking quads were like jelly. <laughs> it is a feeling. Let me tell you that. Yeah, it we got a bike a in our living room that we I use. I used to use a decent amount, but I don't. You should I do the bike while. on the pod. It's just the whole pod. You're on the bike. <laughs> I want to get one of those ones for under your desk. You can buy like an under the desk, like yeah. where you're just using it. Um, <clears throat> rat list. Uh, I always want to do traffic, but it's just the same shit again. It just gets me every time. Like, it just makes me angry every time I'm driving places. I was driving up to the garden yesterday, and I was like, I can't believe this. Everybody just started driving. All of a sudden, there's no traffic. Where did they all go? Just it's all crazy. of a sudden, no traffic. It's almost like just fucking drive and it'll be fixed. Yeah, just drive. Um, what are you fucking stupid? <laughs> that's what, dude, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I, th- I don't think I have anything else. I think that I haven't done... I just went to the game yesterday. I'm trying to think if there's anything else on like my way in, but I don't think I had to deal with anything too too bad. Um, so yeah, that's all I got. I don't know if you have anything else. Nobody pissed me off yesterday, really. No, there was one, one woman there. that cut us in line, like waiting to get in. But like, I, I, what do I care? Yeah, it's just not worth the the effort or the annoyance of being annoyed. That who cares? You're going to the same place, anyways. Thank y'all for tuning in. We appreciate it very much. Make sure to subscribe to How About Them Celtics. Check us out on podcast platforms and leave a like on the video. We'd appreciate it very much. Um, yeah, I'll let Sam wrap it up. Yeah, thank you very much for listening or watching. If you're watching, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily uploads coming at you at 5 a.m., whether it's these shows that are Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays going up, Talk and Seas, which is live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in the morning at some point. Then you've got the game recaps the day after the game. You have pre-games a half hour before each game. We we have so much content for you. You don't know what to do with it. You subscribe, you get all of it. It's free. You leave a like, it's free. You leave a comment, it's free. Say what's popping. It's actually rewarding. It's better than free. Um, you can also find us on Spotify and Apple. If you follow us there, you're going to get the audio pods and game recaps right to your inbox. You can leave us a five-star review too. We, we would like that very much. You can find us via email. HBTCpod at gmail.com is the way to do that. You saw us read. We had a good amount of emails today. We had, what, four or five? Uh, Good crowd. Good crowd. Definitely join it. You can also find us on socials. How about them? Seas, that's Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. The Facebook is just the name of the podcast. Our streams are there. They're on YouTube, and they're on Twitter. 
Jack also, Twitter's at Jack Simone NBA. Sorry, before you do that, just shout out to the Papa Tom Parlay to wrap up the show. He hit. I just, I just need to give him his love. He hit yesterday. I just need to give him his love. Sorry. My bad. And uh, follow me in San Francisco. It's a first time. Check, check, go.